product liability is not enough. Right now, manufacturers want to say, oh yeah, product liability will take care of everything, but it's not really going to work. It won't give us what we need. Manufacturers really want product liability, meaning that you can only have the manufacturer responsible for a crash if someone can prove there's a manufacturing defect, a design defect, and so on, and that the product is proven to present undue risk. Okay, so it kind of makes sense that if there's a software defect that caused a crash without any question, that should be the manufacturer's problem. That's right, and we're not saying otherwise. But the catch is that there are going to be a lot of situations where it's not so clear, and proving the manufacturer has a product defect is going to be a little more than is plausible. As an example, Mercedes is putting out this feature called Drive Pilot. And when Drive Pilot is engaged, the driver is told it's okay to watch a movie, it's okay to play a video game on the dashboard, and so on. In other words, in Drive Pilot, Mercedes is telling the customers that it's okay to not watch the road. Mercedes is also telling journalists that they accept legal responsibility for problems while using Drive Pilot. Well, that certainly sounds like they're accepting responsibility for crashes, but if you read the details of what they're actually providing to journalists in the detailed statements, that's not what's happening here. What they're doing is they're accepting responsibility for product liability. Well, they had to accept that anyway. That's not a voluntary thing. If you sold a defective product, you have liability for that. But what they're not doing is they're not accepting responsibility for negligent driving. So we're going to get to that in a moment. But the reason product liability doesn't give us what we need is that it's very difficult and expensive to prove product liability. You might need to do analysis of the source code, and that means setting up a secure room and paying experts to go in there and look at it. It takes hundreds, if not thousands of hours. It's super painful. It's super expensive. And for a single crash, let's say some car runs a red light or some car hits a pedestrian, it's going to be so expensive, it's really infeasible to fund that kind of effort just for one crash like that. Well, people say, what about a class action where there are a bunch of cars and we say all oh, the cars have the same defect? Well, yeah, that is a way that this typically happens. But all those class action cars have to be the same somehow. So if um, a company, and this goes beyond Mercedes, this is any level three vehicle, if a company is updating their neural network software every week, then you have to prove that 10, 20, 30, 200 weeks of cars, all with slightly different software, are all the same car for a class action. And even if you can do that, if you have some machine learning, how exactly do you reverse engineer what's in a neural net to prove it's a software defect or a training defect or a bias in the training data? This is all pretty new ground for um, product liability. It's really unclear how it's gonna turn out other than that it'll be really expensive. And the reality is there are plenty of crashes where this just doesn't make sense. To be sure, there will be some product liability cases, and that'll be the right thing for those cases. But for the vast majority of crashes where you have to decide whether the human driver is to blame, the car is to blame, product liability is the wrong tool. It's a hammer when you need a screwdriver. It's just the wrong way to go. If you have a car that runs a red light and hits a pedestrian, it ran the red light. If the pedestrian, why does it matter which line of code or which neuron in a, in a neural network was the fault? You know that the car did something that if a human driver had done, it would be bad. So why do we need to go all this expense? We know there's a problem. Why do we have to go through all this? It just doesn't make sense. So what we should be doing is we should be minimizing the number of cases that are product liability and solving all the easy ones by something that is not a really heavy sledgehammer, something that's a little bit easier to apply and still come up with common sense, reasonable, just results.